that sure is a pretty tower. Look at that. That building behind it <laughs> just ruins the view so much though. Oh my lord, you don't realize how close that is. And then, and then there it is. It used to be like Tokyo Tower was one of the only big build. Hello birds, how are you guys doing? Did oh, almost drop the gimbal. That was, that was a little shakier than we were going for. Yeah, back in the day, it was that Tokyo Tower, you see, we're actually up on a hill here and a lot of people don't realize that. And you, okay, can we get the birds? Can we, there we go. You know what, let's just go a little wider. And then we can get everything. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? We're starting out here at Tokyo Tower with the view delightfully um, improved. We'll say improved by this horrendous building that's been built behind it. And now we're gonna go walk through the back streets all the way to Akihabara today. How is everybody doing? I feel I should start this stream by saying Happy New Year and welcome to 2023. Right now we are at Shiba Koen or Shiba Park. No relation to Shiba Inu, probably. I don't, I don't see any, there's no dogs. There's no Shiba Inu here. And this is what the park looks like from, from above. Like, bird's eye view and all that stuff and this guy is running to catch up with a group of joggers he's, he's probably not he's likely solo jogging but it's always good to have a backstory for people so today we have quite a walk ahead of us oh boy here comes that group I was telling you about. he was running away from the group the sound of him coming up from behind was nothing shy of moderately intimidating <laughs> you could just hear boom, 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 boom. and with the sun to our back we're gonna be going through the back streets today from here all the way down to the area of Akihabara it is my first visit to the Tokyo Lens studio of the year and I'm looking forward to it it's going to be a bit of a nice morning walk. Eva Chan kicking off the super chat saying good morning for your morning coffee. Eva Chan, thank you very much for that. Just for that, just for you. We'll take a quick peek into Zoujoji Temple here once we get in. This is a different entrance. And John Manning, how's it going, John? John saying good morning, Justin. Can't stay. Aw, uh, work in the morning. Just want to say thanks for seeing me last month. Yeah, John is part of the Patreon crew. And he dropped me a message letting me know that he was in Tokyo. And he is, he was able to come out and hang out with me for a morning of coffee and laughs at the studio as we kind of got to know each other. So John, thank you so much for that. It was awesome hanging out with you. And this here is Old Joji Temple. Okay, so let's take a quick peek in here and we'll start making our way towards Akihabara. It is bright this morning. It's good. I'm happy that we actually got decent weather. There we are. This is one of the most quintessential views of Tokyo Tower you can get, or it once was, before the building of ultimate hideousness was designed and built and is now, look at that. Oh, it was so nice. I guess if you're like okay with Photoshop, it wouldn't be that hard to remove. But yeah, they're setting up all the stalls or taking down all the stalls. I wonder which it is. I'm going to go with taking down all the stalls since New Year's is over. And so we are going to make our way this way through the back streets. And JZM saying for the Tokyo Lens Explorer Stream for the year, the first Tokyo Lens Explorer Stream of the year. Let's go. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate you keeping the super chat ball rolling. And Crow in here, who only I am allowed to call Zero, also keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to yourself as well. I just love the entrance to this temple by the way like, just look at it just look how and you see that from the street and you're just like wow that is that's beautiful so and vagabond turtle which is an amazing name in and of itself i'm gonna be a bicycle today is in here saying hey there norm greetings from 
Well, that was still red. You threw me off. Did somebody jaywalk more than I did? She jay cycled? Is that a thing? We'll say that she jay cycled. Think about Turtle saying, greetings from the night before in Sweden. This, every time someone sends in a, a chat, it moves the screen. Looks like a gorgeous day. That it feels like a gorgeous day here. Thank you so much for keeping that super chat ball rolling. And Cassius, Cassius, did I get that right? Finally on time for a stream. How long are we going for? Might be running a few errands with you. I'll play on my phone. We have quite a walk to do today. I'd say we have at least a five kilometer walk, but it's gonna be all ziggy zaggy. So it's gonna be all over the place. Did ziggity zaggity, ziggity zaggity, hoi hoi hoi. All right, and Angela also keeping the super chat ball rolling, saying finally catching a live. What is your favorite part about living in Tokyo? Happy New Year's. I would say two things that I love about living in Tokyo. Number one is the overall accessibility to everything, and number two is the juxtaposition caused by how much I enjoy Japanese nature in the countryside. I feel like I enjoy the Japanese countryside and nature about a thousand times more just because I'm based in Tokyo. So it is spectacular for me in that way. It creates this beautiful gap between the two that I love. So thank you so much. And Kaoru Abbey's, I hope I got it. First time in here, first time in, and you're leaving a super chat. Thank you so much for that. Great to have you. Nice to meet you. And we are going down to Javigdate Great Gate. I didn't. I massacred that, saying, "No, I don't know what I did." Oh, I accidentally added you as a moderator. I am. I'm trying to walk and do this, but my hands are freezing cold. I'm sorry, I've removed your moderator privileges. <laughs> My hands are, I probably should have worn gloves today, but here we are. Uh, love the videos as always, and glad I caught a nice stream to enjoy a nice coffee breakfast on us. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. And down to Olivia, who's also keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying not much, but hopefully for a drink. Love these live streams. And trying to get tickets for an amazement so I can meet you because I'm like an hour from it. Yes, that is one of the events. So now that we're into 2023, there are a ton of things. We're going to be going down to Vancouver this year. We're going to be going to an amazement in North Carolina in May. There are events that we are doing all over the place, not to mention the number of events we are going to be doing right here in Tokyo. In fact, me and the Patreon crew, let's turn around and take a look at this, are working on a Patreon calendar so I know when patrons are in Japan so I can open up studio hours for us all to hang out and whatnot. Looking forward to that. Let's go. Ooh, look at this. I totally forgot about this. This is like the fanciest little toilet ever. Look at that. It's a fancy, it's like a little fancy underground toilet hut. Spectacular. It's like Pizza Hut, but but worse. So I'm looking forward to doing all the in-person events in Tokyo, right in the studio this year. For those of you who have had a chance to come and visit the studio already, as you know, there is more than enough space for everybody. We have that giant balcony that's nearly the size of the studio itself as well. So there's plenty to see. You know what? This, this street is too main for me. We're going to the back streets. Forget these main streets. We're going into the back streets. So moving on. So Olivia, again, thank you so much for that. And Illuminate Gaming, thank you for keeping that super chat ball rolling. Say morning, Norm. Thanks for this star point. I was just here, this temple about four years ago. Very nice place. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much. I am having a great day. It's off to a good start. We got beautiful weather, no rain. That's always a good start. And Jared Turner keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying happy new year's to you, Norm. Recent Patreon subscriber. Oh, good to have you. Welcome. I hope you're gonna let me know if you're coming to Japan. Is this a, a back alley? What, where does this go? I've never seen this street before. We're gonna go down this street. Uh, where were we? I, there we go. 
I'm just trying to catch up here. I scrolled down and I lost it. And just a little tip for some water, too much coffee isn't good for a long walk. Thank you so much. And John Manning in here again. Say, ooh, what have I done? I almost did it again. There's a great Italian restaurant run by a guy named Santa. What? What's going on here? There's something going on here, guys. Some backstreet shadiness. Wow. Oh, okay, that's where we are. I did not realize that that connected there. And this is why we explore the back streets. So here you're gonna have a whole bunch of people doing their Hatsumolde or their first shrine visit of the year. Look at this big, beautiful, brand new shrine gate. We have all the New Year's celebrations going on. All the salary men doing their thing. This is why when people ask me like, oh, do you prefer Tokyo or Osaka? You're gonna find way more hidden shrines and temples and whatnot in the back streets of Tokyo than you will in Osaka. So I am very partial to Tokyo just for that reason and because it's so much quieter. Even with all this morning noise, it's still quieter than Osaka. So, all right. And, and John, no, I do not know the, uh, the Italian restaurant near here. I'll have to check it out. So, and Kaoru saying, how's your morning going? Tomorrow is my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Kaoru. Happy birthday to you. Does that count as, as a song? I feel like that counts as a song. It's gotta count as a song. And Matthias, Matt, Mattias, Matt, 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 I'm not, Mr. Davis, I, don't want to butcher that any more than I already have. What do we got here? Wow, oh, we have an army, a literal little army of salarymen coming up behind us. Hey yo, keep up the great work. Absolutely love your content. Have you ever thought about doing a video on hauntings in Japan? Ha I already have. I did a video on haunted tunnels. Did that some time ago. It was a really fun video. It surprisingly took longer to produce than I expected, but it's up on the main channel. Uh, I'm leaving North Carolina to move to Japan. Woo. That is congratulations, by the way. That is just as you leave Japan to visit North Carolina. Hope you had a great new year. New year was fantastic. Look at this tiny little narrow street here and the buildings. Look at this. Unfortunately, these always struggle a lot with like that. It's a blue sky, it's not a white sky. But dynamic range on a cell phone during a live stream is always a bit of a challenge. But look at these back streets right here. I, I love this. I love these buildings. I just, but look at this. That, that seems totally safe. With all the exposed wire and wood. Totally safe. This one here, they've, uh, They've totally taped it off. That's that's fine, right? That's I would definitely want to live in this building, you know, right next to this super super safe place. All right, we are literally never gonna get there at this rate if I keep doing this, if I keep stopping everywhere. And Marty in here with a very generous super chat. Morning, Norm. Hope you had a great New Year's celebration. I've been meaning to ask this for a while. What are the streets like to skate on when I finally make my way to in Japan? I'll be thinking of bringing my rollerblades with me. I've actually answered this one 20 or 30 times. So I'll give a bit of a, a brief abridged version, if you will, of the answer. It's technically not illegal, but it's also technically not legal, which is where the difficulty falls in. You see, sidewalks, which don't exist right here, are rated for people and bicycles. Streets are rated for cars and bicycles. Now, if you get a back street where it's less than a certain number of cars per hour, blah, 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 technically you can use them recreationally, but not for transportation. The police will stop you. I get around Tokyo on a skateboard most of the time. Skateboard and bicycle, aside from walking, are my two main forms of transportation. And I get stopped almost 
daily by cops who are like, get off that skateboard. Get off that skateboard. You're not allowed to ride that skateboard. And honestly, they're, they're not wrong. They're not right, but they're not wrong. It's not illegal, but it's also not legal. They leave gray zone in a lot of Japanese laws for the sole purpose of the police being able to exercise their own free will and interpretation. There are a lot of laws in Japan left vague completely on purpose just so that the police have more power. It's kind of weird for people coming from countries where the laws are like really written in stone and super clear, but in Japan it is very much not that way. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for the super awesome and kind super chat. And let me know if you have any follow-up questions. And Vagabond Turtle saying, I'm so jealous of that weather. I'd be biking all the time. We have snow, ice, and darkness. That sounds awful. That's like 90% of the reason that I left Canada. It's just the snow, ice, and darkness. Very happy that it's only, it's like one degree right now. It's not even that cold. I don't even, I don't even have gloves, which is proving to be trouble on the screen as I try to scroll through and read people's messages. But, and happy new year, explorer underscore BLN. Thank you very much. Waiting for the Patreon calendar. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that. That's actually one of the priorities for this month. So by the end of January, there should be like a meetup calendar where if you're gonna be in Japan and you're part of the crew, it's entirely possible. All right, it, the entire thing will likely be run through the Discord. So the there's like a base level of Patreon that's just like, hey, I'm, I'm a supporter, but it doesn't really have a lot of stuff. The middle level with the, the Discord and the secret Instagram access and all of that, that's what it'll be linked to. So can we message you whenever we're in Tokyo on Patreon? I've been a patron for a few months, of course. Again, it'll probably be a lot easier if we have the calendar up and running. That way I don't have to check every single message and miss it because I would hate to miss it. But yes. Oh my God. We're going to try and make this light. <laughs> no, this technically isn't jaywalking. It technically is. Oh, we're fine. Everything's fine. Calm down, guys. Everything's all right. All right. Speaking of all right. Where are we at? Did I miss anybody? Sparkle Monkey, Happy New Year. See you in November, thank you very much. And I have now started recording my outdoor walk. There we go. Then we'll know. And Merwin keeping that super chat ball rolling in here saying good morning. Excited to, oh no, comments came in and it wiped it out. Excited to be going back to Japan in March. Ooh, happy New Year and have a great day. Well, Happy New Year to you as well. I hope you enjoy your visit in March. Got to reset up my Patreon. Oh, got to re-up my Patreon. There we go. Hope to chat with you more. I hope so too. This year, so one of the other things that I'm doing is, so for those of you who don't know, in the off chance that you don't know, I have given away a round trip flight to Japan. That has happened. And the more exciting thing about it is that Tokyo Treat and Sakurako have jumped in to give away two additional round trip flights, as well as my flight winner has gotten a free night in a hotel sponsored by one of our patrons, which is incredible, as well as a Japan Rail Pass seems to be lining up quite nicely. Absolute insanity. And then I think January 31st is the final deadline for the Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko uh, giveaways. But there's going to be one more, which is, in the case that Patreon ever hits a thousand members, I'm just gonna start doing giveaways on there. Like, I don't know, every six months to a year, I'm just gonna keep giving them away. Just keep giving them away. Just keep giving them away. Is the current plan subject to change? However, however, 
I don't think it would be outside of the realm of possibilities. And we are about to break in through the sunlight over here and get hit by this car. So let's swoop over. Look at that. Whew. Beautiful Tokyo morning. Absolute excitement. There's just so much to look forward to right now. And we are approaching some of my favorite areas as well. So it's gonna be a very good morning walk. And Chris Lessard in here with an insanely generous super chat. Just starting the year off amazing saying thank you for all oh, the message came in. Thank you for all you do, Norm. Let's start the new year off right. Here's for your coffee for the week. That is, that is quite the coffee budget. So if you're new to the Tokyo Lens Explore channel, I actually have a little bit of a system. And one of the main systems is that these funds, these, these, these streams fund super, I can't speak this morning. Let's try that over. We're gonna go back to the beginning of that sentence. Try again. These streams fund future streams. That's right. So one of the things I try to do is I try to use everything from these to, ooh, we can see the Shinkansen. So distracted. There we go. Come on, aim. No, insufficient memory made shut down of the app. We don't want that. If the app shuts down, I'll probably just restart things. I emptied out my phone, but now it's threatening to, to shut down. That's not good. Oh, I don't like that at all. All right, so it just became a stressful stream. Morning, Norm. Been planning a trip to Japan. You know what? I have an idea. Give me a second. We're going to pause the stream for two seconds. There we go. We should be back. I just deleted my podcast app, which is like three gigabytes. So it should hopefully open up more space and not have us crash. So anyway, one of the things that I wanna do this year is really hit hard this Tokyo Lens Explorer channel and get us doing more streams in more locations. I already have a small handful planned and you guys are the ones making all that possible. So a huge, huge thank you to you guys for that. I also don't think we're gonna make this light, but we'll get up pretty close. And even if we don't make the light, this is one of my favorite corners in Tokyo. No, I'm not selling myself. I just really like this little corner. You'll see why in a second. You know what? I think if I really run, we can make it. We kind of made it, but not at all. Oh man, he's really going for it. Okay. I thought I was taking a risk, but dude made it. So I love this area here. We've got this little shrine over here with more people doing Hatsumode. And then you get the trains here. He has Shinkansen passing through as well. It's just an awesome little space to be. I'd love to see a live stream on Enoshima. That's great. I already did that. That one's over on the Tokyo Lens channel, actually. That was one of the streams that launched this channel here. So, feel free to go check that out. Now we got the trains going ka-chung, ka-chung. So, my summary being that, Chris Lessard, thank you so much for that super generous super chat. Really appreciate it. And on to Alex Tonai. Wow, this is gonna be noisy. We're just gonna do our best. Alex is, wow, it is, it's this. Not easily distracted at all. Not not terribly. Morning Norman plan a trip to Japan in November. It's so hard. 
way too many places I want to go and things I want to see but not enough time that sounds about right that sounds like a, a fairly standard and reasonable Japan trip issue it's a good issue to have and blame techie in here with another very generous super chat keeping that ball rolling saying happy new year and thanks for all your footage love the live stuff i really enjoyed the pet detective and train journey i still think about the <laughs> pony at the temple it was my first live it yeah that pony at the temple but that pet detective man that was that was something else let's get right into the back streets this all actually ends up coming out and connecting at the same place. So we'll go into the back streets here just because we can and because I love the look of it. We've got to come back and do another live stream here at night. It's been all too long. Like, look at this area. <sighs> I love it so much. Also, there's a, a thing, so, with stuff and a place. It's a lovely noise you've made. Could you make it again, sir? There we are. And so, oh, you did make it again, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I, I, wish, I wish he would cough more without covering his face. It's so great, it's like, like everybody's favorite hobby is to experience that. Look at these streets. So right now we are in the area of Shinbashi. So everything's really awesome in the area of Shinbashi. In case you didn't already know, I've done several live streams out here, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful space. So we'll kind of zigzag through here as we make our way towards Akihabara. Can't believe we're here already. We like whip through that pretty quick. Look at, like seriously, look at all the back streets though. Absolutely adore going through all these narrow back streets. You guys can understand why, right? It's not, I don't think it's hard to understand at all. Um, Atatakai uh, I had to call in sick today, but at least I'm able to catch I'm sorry to hear that you had to call in sick. Well, ake omed to you yourself. Happy New Year. And I hope you're feeling better soon. Really. And thank you for keeping this. And Eowyn O'Connor, is that a, did I get it right? You have convinced me to become a patron just out of the hospital after my appendix exploded. Okay, that's the thing I wanna talk about. That sounds terrible in every way. Oh my, I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you doing okay? Also, welcome to the Patreon. Yes, very excited to have you, but are you okay? Also, I, I get the feeling that once or twice, they may have had an issue here with, I don't know, garbage disposal or other activities. Cause they want you to know. They want you to know that there's there's cameras and there are it's just if you're standing right here the camera is blocked by the pole and based on the way Japanese law works they're very unlikely to have any cameras outside of the property that they own so you know uh, there's another one over there that's two cameras unless there's a third one I'm missing I'm calling that their bark is louder than their bite because there's actually not that many, there's actually not that many cameras. How's your appendix doing though? And Matthias is saying that I'm a member of the Backstreet Boys now. Matthias, you used the super chat for that. I appreciate it and I love you. Thanks so much. I think we could probably, if, if we don't go there, Oh, see, everybody else is jaywalking here. I'll just, I'll do that. See, if you're at the crosswalk, see Japanese people are like, I have to go. Nobody jaywalks, they do. They do, just not at the crosswalk. At the crosswalk, they actually wait to cross. So, that's a thing. 
Man, Zero Pro is in here saying, afraid I have to go to bed and stop watching. Got work tomorrow, but have a nice rest of your walk. Can't wait to see what the New Year's has in store for the channel. Have breakfast on me. Thank you so much. Today's gonna be the first day of the studio. So today I'm actually probably gonna do a pretty big meal. I've got some major projects in the go for just, just for today alone. Just today, there is a ton of stuff to get kicked off and get started. So I'm actually looking forward to seeing the studio. There have been some fairly major changes to the studio in the last two or so weeks of last year. And Bork in here, how's it going? Excited to have caught a live stream. Any big goals in 2023? I don't set yearly goals anymore. I used to do the whole, uh, what's it called? New Year's resolution and yearly goals and everything. But now I'm like, why, why should they be cyclical? If I have a goal, I'm chasing it now. Life is far too short. And so now I just chase everything. I am still working on the pilot's license thing. Um, doing that as I run the channel and have a whole life and do client projects and everything like that. So it's taking a while, but again, the goal was to try to get it within roughly two years. We're approaching year one. Railway 150th anniversary, 150, 150 Pokemon. Those are all original Pokemon. Love that. And we got reflections of the sun in the glass. Whew. And the train's all boxed off. Can't access it. Let's head down this way. But Bork has been on a huge binge of the channel, which has been really nice because we've gotten to get to know each other really well along the way as you've been going through and leaving comments. So thank you for that. I have been enjoying hanging out with you and getting to know you as you've left all of these. It's been fun. I look forward to getting to know you better as well. So, we're gonna go through here, where it gets really noisy under the tracks. There's no space to jaywalk. All of these are actually bad options. There's no good option. I don't wanna go that way. I wanna go this way. That's our project for now. Cross the road. And Griffin Large, howdy from KW. How's it going? Is this the same Griffin that came out to the, the meetup, the hangout in Toronto? So, uh, coming to Japan in May, super pumped. Hope that Patreon calendar gets up before then. The goal is to have it up by the end of this month or sooner, maybe even within the week. I've got some members of the mod squad can we go towards Mach to see the trains? The light's changing, Iku. There's a spot over here I want to go. Iku, I promise I will take you to see trains next time. I promise, okay? So this, for those of you who don't know, is the Shimbashi area. And there's actually a lot to explore underneath the tracks here and that's our goal for now is to explore underneath the tracks like these but griffin thank you so much for that thank you for keeping that super chat ball rolling if you are the same griffin i'm excited to meet you again it was a good time and Tokyo is nice this morning. It's a nice, peaceful morning. Now, we're looking for spots along here that we can squeeze into the side of the train tracks. That's our goal, is to squeeze in along the side of the train tracks. Like here. This isn't quite what we're looking for. But we are getting closer. Now these areas do look great. 
at any time. I eat during the day and whatnot like this. But they look way, way cooler in the evening, at night, with all the lights and the neon and the cyberpunk-esque vibe that gets going. I love it. We're gonna cross here. Likely not gonna get squished. We should totally be fine, I believe. That's a pigeon. Hello, pigeon. We have a club for that, in case you didn't know. They really make great use of the space underneath the train tracks. In fact, there is an entire university that specializes in having a course, I believe, just for teaching architecture under train tracks and how to make good use of it. There we go. Look at this little space. Actually, this space is semi cyberpunk esque. Even like, look at the restaurants in here. Look at this space. Now, you can't tell. Uh, right now, it's just white, but to me, right now, this light's actually closer to purple. It's just not showing up on the screen. And this whole little area is like restaurants and bars and stuff like that. And there's a ton of hidden spaces like this along the rain railroad tracks, especially along the Yamanote line, where you can just hide out inside. And it's spectacular in every way. And it's one of those things that if you're not looking for the entrance to it, you're likely just to miss it. It's got an entire like upstairs section there. Let's go up, I'll show ya. In case you need them and you get a different perspective, which we otherwise wouldn't get. And I totally didn't just almost trip and fall. There we go. So that's where the toilets are. And then you can see the whole space from above like this. And then there's a free ladder there for people who love ladders. So, that's, that's a thing. And this says casino, but it's most likely not an actual casino, in case you were wondering whether or not it's an actual casino, because I figured you might be wondering if it's an actual casino. And we'll head back down this way and try not to fall down the stairs. That's my song. It's about heading down this way and trying not to fall down the stairs. It's a great song. I've been working on it now for, well, I'd say a good six, seven years. It's uh, one of the, the better pieces in the Tokyo Lens album, which you can purchase on eBay. It's only available from people who have ripped it from the stream and burned it to a CD and sold it on eBay without my approval. There may not be any currently available because that's never happened. But if it does, this will be why we're making things happen, people. Exciting. And Cookie Ninja in here. Cookie Ninja, how you doing? Happy New Year. Stopping by to say hi. Let's have a great stream. Thank you so much, as always, for keeping that super chat ball rolling. Very happy to have you here, as always. And we're gonna, we're gonna walk across this road, not run. You probably shouldn't get squished, but the underground tunnel thing, like this, this gives you an idea of nothing, because it's just a tube and text. Let's go take a look. This is what it looks like in here. So again, it's a continuation, but with a considerably different vibe and look to it. I love how they create separation between the spaces, just in terms of the style. And you can see the older building and all the brick off here to the side. This is the Tokyo that I love. And we have another restroom over here.
How's the quality while we're in here? It hasn't like dipped or died, has it? Do we still have an okay connection? Do we still have video? Do we still have sound? I've always kind of avoided coming into these spaces, especially at night because it can get really crowded with people in here, surprisingly, and that alone can kill the signal, but also roof. So a roof, you know, roof. <laughs> Don't really think I need to say much more. There are plenty of openings here. But. All right, audio apparently drops every now and then, but connection seems to be okay. Lagging a touch, oh no. Okay, maybe we'll go through here a little faster. Faster is fine go through at warp speed. Nope, go a little more. We got this. Does it feel like we're going at warp speed? There's an exit there, but it still continues. I gotta go all the way to the end, right? Feels necessary to go to the end. So that's what we'll do. I wasn't planning on going for a jog today, but here we are. There we go. And the best part is, it continues. So we're out, hopefully, Signal is okay-ish. We're now already near your Yurakcho. And Yurakcho has its own indoor adventure space. Look at this. Oh, it's dark in this one. And I'm just gonna talk really loud to battle with the music that's probably gonna get me flagged. Da -da 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 -da. Why is the music so loud in here? It's like eight o'clock in the morning. There doesn't need to be music blaring through here. It just feels so unnecessary in every way. These are the spaces that when I first moved to Tokyo, that I fell in love with the most. It's like, look at this. Like, this isn't even, I, there are people I know who would not even be able to fit through, that was, I had to duck. That maximum height there is like a meter and a half. That is really low. So, but when I first moved to Tokyo, it became like my goal to find all of these hidden little alleys and narrow streets and whatnot. I love them so much. And the area of Shinbashi and Yuracho have an absolute abundance of them. And then you get out and you're in spaces like this. And Let's take a look. Yeah, I think I just, to be honest with you, I think I got stream sniped. Nikki Powell here. There's uh, Nikita Henkelman saying, can I get a picture with you? I'm behind you trying to catch up. I'm in the area, so I thought I'd stop by. Is that you? Yeah. Yeah, let's get a photo together. <laughs> no worries. This is a peak of the area here, guys. All right, let's grab a photo. Good to meet you. Yeah. Thanks so much, eh? Yeah. Take care. <laughs> that is nice. Yeah, it got stream sniped, and it was totally worth it. 
Look at the buildings here. Look how narrow everything is. Look at that. Yeah, I've had things like really peaceful and quiet for what? The last two years while the, the borders have been closed. And by peaceful and quiet, I mean like depressing and lonely. Some people weren't super excited about the ideas of the borders opening up, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. I was super hyped and I'm so glad because now we get to actually do stuff together. Now there's, it feels like there's more of a driving purpose behind making the content because it's spaces that you can actually go to and check out. Like this guy's bowl. If you ever want to check out his bowl, it's right there. And now you can, you can come to Japan and be like, oh my God, that's that bowl from YouTube. And like everybody be like, oh, famous bowl. Yeah. So that's a thing. Or like this guy's bags of, it's like the worst Santa ever. Also look at this. These old holdout buildings that just stay strong. I love them so much. And now we are right along the area of Yurakcho. And Yurakcho has an absolute ton of these like under the track, beside the track buildings and shops and whatnot. Love them. Uh, also, since now we've had a chance to calm down a bit, Nikita, it was brief, but it was great meeting you. I hope I didn't massacre your name too bad and I hope the photo turned out all right. So also Nikki Powell, I was in the middle of reading your super chat and I got distracted. I do apologize for that. Thank you for your patience. Let me read this one out. So, Nick Powell saying, it's been forever since I've been able to catch you live, have a coffee on me. Can't wait to see what your plans are in 2023. Hey, that rhymed. I don't think it was intentional, but it rhymed. So, these here are what are called Shirobai. Japan for these like bike officers. They are basically just there to get what they can. That's it. I've like, honestly, the number of times that I've watched people go through red lights or almost hit somebody and an officer has done absolutely, absolutely nothing, but then watched a Shirobai follow the guy in front of me for like 10, 15 minutes until he gets too nervous and slips up and then he pulls him over and gives him a ticket is kind of ridiculous. There's zero consistent to it their consistency to it at all if that makes any sense so yeah huge thanks for you guys and everything you do for the economy because that's pretty much all you do is drive the economy and the uh the sad thing is you can contest tickets in japan as well like i have <laughs> i got one ticket i think last year where i had a drive recorder that showed that I didn't do what they claimed. It was ridiculous. They were like, you went over this yellow line. I'm like, I, I literally didn't. I've got a drive recorder. And they're like, yeah, you can go ahead and you can spend weeks in court contesting it. Um, you might get your like 60 bucks back, but you won't get the points back from your license. The second we've decided to give you a ticket, you don't get the points back, even if you contest it and win and it will take weeks off of your life. So it's totally up to you how you want to deal with it. You can pay it or you can go to court. We don't care. And they like sauntered off. And I was like, wow, that's, that's dirty. That is, but it's really no different from, I don't know if you have amazing, caring, dedicated police in your country, drop it in the comment section. Let me know what police are like where you're from. I feel that this is pretty standard across the board for most places that I've been. Um, it's kind of like that in Canada and the US. My friends in Australia are like, oh yeah, it's not too different from us. And when I was out in Italy, everyone's like, yeah, watch out, police here are kind of this way. And I was like, oh, it's like everywhere else. So let me know, let me know. And we're right at Yurakcho Station now. So before the big crowd comes out, I'm gonna slip through here. There we go, got a big old bit camera here. 
and then there's a whole space. Which side do I want to go with? Both sides are kind of great in their own way. I think this time we'll stick to this side of the tracks and then next time maybe we'll do the other side. Maybe we'll do a walk back sometime in the evening. That way we have the daytime walk and the nighttime walk. So, Iceland police maybe? Has anybody ever had any experience with the Iceland police? Yeah, see, that's the other thing. You'll often find that, not always, not always, but individual police officers in Japan can be quite kind. They can. Or they'll go completely in the opposite direction. Like, when I got hit by a truck, there were like, I don't know, 14 officers? And 13 of them were actually really kind and caring and helpful. One of them was just on a mission. And that entire like getting hit by a truck story, if you haven't heard it, that's up on Tokyo Lens as well. Hand is getting better almost. Still unlikely to be able to play the tummy sand just because of the risk that it poses to my finger. And then if my finger gets messed up too bad, this is the international forum, by the way. If the finger gets messed up too bad, I then can't fly anymore because I need full range of motion in my hand for my pilot's medical to be valid here in Japan. So there's the update on that. But that whole story, again, is up on the main channel. Mesmir doing a study for international communication right now in my country being focused on Japan hoping to move and live there in the next four years that is a spectacular goal I love people who set the goal far enough out like it's like four years away five years away something like that rather than I've got to get there next year there's never a rush and it's way better to come here with a set of skills that are marketable and that you can use to get jobs than to come here and end up in a situation. Too many people trade out that short, that long-term win just to get here faster. And if you come here the right way by learning the market, learning marketable skills, or even like if you end up coming here and you're like, oh, I just want to live in Japan for a year. I'm gonna teach English. It's a great way to get your foot in the door. If you start thinking that you want to stay, use that year to learn other skills that you can use to get other jobs. There's a very wide range of job options here in Japan. A lot of people are like, oh, it's recruiting or English teaching. And that's, that's not, no, no. There's so much more. You could like work at a konbini. No, I'm kidding. There's actually, there are a lot of things that you can do in Japan. I have friends working at everything from professional photography. I have friends working in like the medical industry as doctors and techs and everything like that. I've, of course, programmers and everyone in that universe. I've got friends working as editors and designers and you name it. So if you come with skills, you are good. So thank you for that little super chat, which gave a, gave a great boost to our conversation. And I hope it added value to a few people. And right now we are approaching Tokyo Station. The international forum here is to our left. I think we're probably gonna dip under. It's cause from here across Tokyo Station on the Maranochi side, I wonder which way we should go. Okay guys, as we're coming up to the bridge, are we gonna go under the bridge and take the Yaisu side over? Or are we going to go straight across the Marunouchi side and stick with this? The Marunouchi side is a little wider and more open. The Yaisu side, I feel, is a little older and more like Boroi, kind of broken down. I both have their merits. This one looks like newer and fancy under the tracks. It looks a little older and more rugged. Which way are we going? Are we going straight or are we turning right? Drop it in the chat. Let me know what your vote is gonna be. This is where we're at. Oh, it's split right down the middle so far. Ah, uh, 
uh, we're leaning towards straight. A few more people saying go straight. Ah. All right, the early voters have kind of kept us go. Okay, we'll go straight, we'll go straight. Also, this is a nice little cafe that I love hanging out in the mornings. So if you're ever coming through here, you might actually see me sitting down there having a coffee in the morning. We'll go straight down this side and check out the Marunoshi side of Tokyo. If you haven't done so already, do me a favor, give that like button some love and let's push this up to that next like mile. So where are we even at? I don't even really look at that stuff anymore. So I'm gonna take a peek and see where we are. Again, where are we at? I can like load it up on a separate device because I've actually gotten all the stats like hidden from me so that I don't see them. We are at 370, we can 100% get to 400 likes in the next minute. Come on guys, give that like button some love. The like to view ratio is a little off. Let's see if we can throw an imbalance. Let's, let's see if we can bring some balance to the force. Is that, that's, that's how we're gonna say it? Heck, I would love to see us get to 450 in like the next minute or so. Ooh, I think we can do it, honestly. I think 450 is entirely possible. A road bike would be too extreme to bring for a trip to Japan. I don't think it'd be too extreme to bring, but you might be able to like get or rent one here cheaper. I know a lot of people who have road bikes are particularly attached to their bike. I would say look at the cost for what it would be to bring your bike to Japan. It would be quite a process and I don't imagine it would be cheap either. That's a really good question. So, and there's a thing in here, someone's mentioning here that the, uh, the crossings beep to help the visually impaired. Yes, and that's actually, there's a great deal of sounds in the stations as well. Uh, for, for example, the bird sounds that you will hear inside of a Japanese station are there to uh, help the visually impaired find exits because the bird signifies the outdoors. So, and here we are approaching the Marunouchi entrance of Tokyo Station. It's gonna be here on our right. Nimble Fox, that is okay. I see you saying that you can't send in super chats. Nimble Fox, it is completely all right. Happy to have you here. I see you. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that everybody's doing well. So, this to me, so I actually pass through this area almost every single day on my way to the studio and it's always on bicycle though. So I never get to go through nice and slow. And graphic papista, did I get it right? I hope I got it right. Say hello, I've been following your content for over a year. I wanna ask you if you have any impression on how good Japan is for hearing impaired folks. Okay, so I don't know if my opinion is gonna be my opinion, my experience, my answer, whatever you want to call it, is going to be super, super helpful. But you've taken the time to leave me a super chat, so I'm going to try and give you the best answer that I can, starting with a bit of context. So about... Uh, uh, I don't know, two, three years ago? I'd say three years ago now. Three, maybe three and a half. I got what's known as Topatse Nancho, and it is sudden hearing loss. I suffered sudden hearing loss on my left side. It was terrifying. It constantly felt like half my head was underwater. Like even like my left eye felt like it was underwater. 
I struggled with balance. I struggled with hearing. You don't realize that hearing is like a, a 3D thing. And so when you hear a car honk, you have an idea of where that is coming from. So you know, is it behind you? Is it in front of you? Is it to your right, to your left? You can tell that because of your ears. And I lost all sense of that. So I'd be walking down the street and I'd hear a car honk and I would jump because I had no idea. Is it right behind me? Or is it beside me? Where is it? And more often than not, it wasn't right behind me, but I couldn't tell that. And so this is what the exit side looks like. And this is what the station side looks like. Now in that time, I didn't particularly notice anything all that different. And that says Tokyo Eki. I didn't particularly notice anything different in accessibility in Japan. There is a surprising amount, for example, for the visually impaired, there is a surprising amount of auditory cues as well as braille almost everywhere. Like you'll be walking down the station and like you'll be feeling the handles and the handle will tell you like what train you're at, for example. Like if you're going up the stairs to the Yamanote line, there'll be braille on the railing to let you know that that's the Yamanote line, for example. It's, it's quite interesting. But for the hearing impaired or auditory impaired, whatever the proper term may be, I personally didn't notice that many major differences. If you have any examples that you'd like to, to ask about, or if anybody in the comments or chat right now has any experience with that, I'd absolutely love to hear it from you. Moderators, do me a favor. If anything stands out that I definitely shouldn't miss, please let me know. Please highlight it for me. Uh, please copy and paste it with your moderator powers. I give you moderate permission to spam if you ooh, you can see the trains out here if you're still watching there are some trains for you and here are people with cameras so that's that's also a thing news cameras for the morning and Again, my app is telling me ins insufficient memory may cause the app to crash and close. If it does, I'll try to jump back into the, the like stream is the word I'm looking for. But I guess we're going to find out if insufficient memory is going to cause the app to close. I did, how much memory does this thing take though? Really? I just, before the stream, I made sure there was at least 10 gigabytes available on the phone and then cleared up like another four to five. That's, that's awesome. Okay, I like it. Even if the stream does crash, at least we got to see that guy's hair. So, you know, pretty much a win for everybody. Green license plate means that this is a hired car, in case you didn't know. So all these ones with green license plates are for hired cars. Now you know. Oh, now there's an element of risk to the stream. Like, is it gonna suddenly crash? Is it gonna suddenly wipe us out and disappear? Will we be okay? Will I have to clear the phone again? There's actually, you know, I could probably go back and delete a whole bunch of old stuff. I'm sure if I get back into it soon enough, I'm hoping it's just a warning, but, but you never know because these streams on a phone are famous for crashing and disappearing but the real question is will we make it to Akihabara first will we make it there who knows and nimble fox have you ever heard of or visited work for wolf bar 
It's a furry bar that's really awesome. The, the barman dresses as a wolf. I've never... What? What's a furry bar? I guess that would be my first question. I hope that I don't regret asking, but I feel it's not impossible that I might. That's right. We're in the ultimate jaywalk right here. Pigeons! What's up, pigeons? How you guys doing? I didn't want to miss this light over here. So we super jaywalked. It's okay. I'm a car now. In case you didn't know that. Now you know. Now you know that I'm a car. Oh, I'm a bike. That was for the bikes. like a big L walk. There we go. High level crimes being committed and I'm leaving proof. So, you know, I say it every time, but if you're ever going to call the cops on me, this right here, this is, this is your chance. You know what? I kind of want to be on that side of the street now. I regret my decision. I kind of want to cut under and go that way. I don't want to go down this street, it's boring. So we're gonna, we're gonna go back. I was literally just jaywalking for the sake of jaywalking. It was, it was pointless. Is jaywalking a jailable offense? I don't think they can throw me in prison for it. They can probably find me. And if they were going to, it would probably be those like, cops on the white bikes. Shido Bai. Also, I know there's probably a bunch of people who are used to tuning into live streams and whatnot, but may not actually be subscribed. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, do me a favor, give that subscribe button some love. We are going to be having one or two more fairly big adventures this year. Let's walk down this like this alleyway, see where this takes us see what we find along the way. We're gonna be having one or two more fairly large live streaming adventures across the country. And this year, we're also gonna be doing a whole bunch of impromptu temporary streams that will not be staying up. So if you don't have notifications on, you're likely to miss those. They may be deleted within 24 hours or in some cases, as soon as the stream finishes. See, I've been trying to do a little more daytime streaming here and there throughout Tokyo, but it's usually like, I don't have like a proper thumbnail and this and the next thing, and I don't feel like making one. I just want to pull up my phone and do a stream every now and then. And those ones there aren't planned. They're not going to be super long streams, usually 20, 30 minute streams, just because I want to show something or just because there's something going on that I want to share with you guys. So those ones there, make sure that you have hit that subscribe button and turned on those notifications. In fact, in the new year, the greatest gift you can give to any creator that you love is to have those notifications on. By the way, projects for Tokyo Lens this year. So last year, we did quite a few projects surrounding people. And this year will be no different. But this year, we're kinda gonna level it up a little bit. I just, uh, you know what? So there's one project, one major project that we did last year where I was able to share an old friend and the closing of his business. And then I kinda stepped it up with the help of you guys. And we gave him a nice big retirement present. And we're going to be doing a follow-up project with him within this year. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. I'm actually just knowing that this project is coming and thinking about the contents of it and what we're gonna be doing. My heart's racing a little bit. Heart racing could also be, because I don't wanna miss this light, but I don't think it's entirely that. Locked 
top of the sound wall. Can kind of see it. Can kind of see it. And Captain Bakonski, I hope I read that right. I uh, said, sorry I can't donate. Doesn't matter. Don't care. Not a problem. Super happy to have you here. Glad to be able to read this. Uh, glad to be live with you. Me too. Have you ever read Richard L. Perry's Ghosts of the Tsunami? No, I have not. Uh, but if it is the, the type of book that it sounds like, uh, back in the 10 year anniversary of the March 11th earthquake, I went down to, uh, I guess went up uh, to one of the hardest hit areas of the earthquake and recorded some of the stories of people and what happened. I think I got three or four people together in a video to share each of their individual stories of that day and show what 10 years of progress on rebuilding the town looks like. What is this? It's all blocked off, but I see a bridge. So we're gonna go through this, this is just our area. This is the Tokyo Drift practice zone right here. And I forgot for a brief moment that the stream might accidentally just shut itself down because of lack of memory. So this, this is exciting once again. Also, these rivers here are the rivers that I go through when I rent boats here in Tokyo. If you haven't caught any of the boating adventures, Tokyo is filled with rivers that go through very much of the city. There's a very incredibly, wildly, unbelievably extensive river and canal network. And you can go through most, if not all of them, hi Shadow, hi, on boat, if you have a captain's license for a Japanese boat, which, I do, so I've been taking us out doing some boating adventures. We have a very special boating adventure, boating <laughs> adventure coming in uh, spring, I would say. Let's say spring. Spring, early summer, we have a very special and exciting boating adventure coming up. So again, gonna wanna be ready for that one. Where are we at? Okay. And if you haven't given the like button some love already, do me a favor. Let's see if we can't push it to 600 likes. I think we can get there. Give that like button some love and drop a question in the comments as we walk, as we get closer to the area of Akihabara. I'd love to give a bit of value, answer a few questions for you guys here and there. So, skip the super chat. I don't like that. Did I skip a super chat? I'm going back. So, Monique is in here. Thank you, Monique, for the super chat saying keep hydrated. And I'm going to scroll back. Moderators, do me a kind favor. Help me find that super chat that I have missed. I did. Uh, is this it? Table. Dropping 10 for Nimble Fox. They owe me a beer also. And Trash Day's guest appearance when I don't actually intend on doing it. They're great guys. Uh, we just don't really hang out, if, if that makes sense. I, the busier I've gotten with the channel, the less I've actually been able to spend time with like my friends and the people around me. Like the most recent uh, journey across Japan and whatnot just wasn't an option to go on that, like schedule wise. And then, so for example, Joey, I probably haven't seen Joey in like a year and a half, two years. I don't remember when the last time we got the chance to hang out was. Busier I get, the flight school thing has really, it's been an absolute pleasure, but it's also taking up a much huger, more massive, giantister chunk of my life 
than I originally anticipated it to, which I should have anticipated. Like I've got to spend like a quarter to half of any given month out in Kagoshima on the other side of Japan to do my flight training. And so that is a moderately time consuming experience, just the back and forth and having lives in two different cities. But it also means that when people are suddenly in Tokyo and they're like, hey dude, let's get together. It, it's just typically not, not an option. And then when they are, I'm gone, et cetera, et cetera. I don't even, usually at the end of every year, I go up and I visit Chris and Sharla and I bring them Christmas gifts and everything like that. You can actually see that through the last couple of years of videos. And this year, there just physically wasn't enough time. And I don't think we were all in the country at the same time. I was back in Canada for a while while they, uh, while they were uh, in Tokyo. And then when I got back into Japan, I think they had already left for like the US and then the UK. So Adrian in here saying, hi Norm from Argentina. Love your videos. Keep the good work. Thank you very much. Super glad to have you here. Love your comments. Keep up the good work. <laughs> this area here, underneath the tracks as well, has a bunch of hidden secrets. We're gonna be following this set of tracks here down toward, hey dude, well, look forward, look forward. When your foot's on the accelerator, eyes forward. Pretty basic rule. I recommend following you. If I missed any other super chats, please let me know, but thank you so much for keeping that ball rolling. Uh -oh. You're already in Victoria, I think. Yeah, see, it's gotten impossible to... Ooh. There's a delivery going on at my studio right now. So notifications started going bonkers. <laughs> I was like, well, this, this is insanely distracting. We're gonna go ahead and stop this. I saw a place the other day called Chicken Gym. Don't remember where I was, but I do remember that it said Chicken Gym. So, you know. Is living beside the train tracks in Japan as bad as other countries? I, I imagine it probably would be. I've never lived directly beside the train tracks. I don't imagine it'd be quiet, but I also, with the number of people who love trains in Japan, I imagine that the people who choose to live right near the train tracks would do so because they enjoy the sound and the view and it doesn't bother them. That would be my assumption, maybe an incorrect assumption, but there are people who will line up on the train platforms like for hours in advance just to get photos of specific trains because they love trains that much look at these look at these spaces just look at this right now we're right near the area of kanda wow. this is the main street area here and this space here leads towards Akihabara. And thanks to you, I went from Tamachi to Shibuya in the early morning. It was a nice experience. I'm glad that you enjoyed that. The early morning walks, while we didn't start as early as we usually do, the early morning walks are a great way to kind of get Tokyo to yourself. A great way to experience a quieter side of Tokyo that you otherwise wouldn't experience. And again, similar to my love, for living in Tokyo due to what it does for me regarding creating a juxtaposition between Tokyo and the countryside. Experience Tokyo like during busy, busy night or waking up early in the morning just to go and take a walk through quiet Tokyo. It creates a juxtaposition that builds appreciation for the infrastructure of the city. Like you've seen it busy a thousand times, but seeing just how quiet it can get can actually be a moderately surprising experience for some people. One of the most common comments that I get on the live streams is that 
people can't believe, for example, when I start a live stream at four o'clock in the morning or something, just how quiet it is, how there are absolutely no people in some of the most crowded areas of Tokyo. Like, how is there nobody? And it's because the city actually shuts down at night. And it's something you don't expect. Even, you know, Toronto, we have streetcars and some method of transportation that'll get you around the city, even at late hours. But in Tokyo, once the train stops, that's it. It is taxi or bust. So, what shoes does everyone like to wear while walking Japan? Any suggestions? Uh, ones that go on your feet. I, I don't, I don't know. Everybody just wears normal shoes. There, there's all kinds of uh, there's everything. They just wear the shoes. <laughs> like sneakers. I don't know. Business people wear business shoes. Joggers will wear jogging shoes. People who wear kicks probably wear kicks. Another little tunnel space there. And then there's two ways from here, several ways actually, that we can get through to Akihabara. We can follow this main street along here, straight down into Akihabara. Or we can go down this like side street, back street area into Akihabara here, which is what we're gonna do. What about those odd looking Feet gloves, those those exist. I rarely see them, but they do exist. And Joyful Cheese keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying, Tokyo's looking good. It's already in the throes of spring, LOL. Uh, you see much snow over Christmas. Thanks again for doing what you do. Well, thank you. Uh, usually, Tokyo will not see, it's definitely not the throes of spring yet. We haven't even gotten into winter yet. We'll see winter in January, February here. Usually end of January, beginning of February is where we're gonna get the coldest times in winter. We might even get snow once or twice. I went up north for the sake of snow this year because we rarely get any in Tokyo. Uh, but the end of February coming into March is when spring will start hitting. But it's usually right before that that we get the uh, the snow if we're gonna have any. January is likely, and you always know when it happens too, because everybody, regardless of what they have going on in their lives, will drop everything to go out and do an obligatory look Tokyo in the snow Instagram post. So you're guaranteed not to miss it. If it had snowed in Tokyo, trust me, you would know. You would know. So, we are actually just a few minutes away from Akihabara at this point. I'm going in a slightly different direction than my studio, just because I want to get into a different area of Akihabara. So, and I'm still getting comments on the original flight giveaway video from people who are like looking forward to winning this flight like it's it's been given away the flight has been won it's, it's in the pinned comment that's you, you should look at the pinned comment and we're gonna come right down this way so for long-term viewers, let me know. Actually, let's go back in here and check out this space. Come on, check out, I know this space. Again, a little back alley space here. While it looks dead and quiet right now, again, this is a space that surprisingly at night actually has businesses running. This is the back door to a lot of businesses on the right side here. And on the left side, there's a couple that are actually open throughout the evening but they set up tables and chairs and everything outside and everyone gathers. It's quite the experience. So. Squirrel, there was no squirrel. There was absolutely no squirrel. There's no squirrels in, you're not gonna find a squirrel in Tokyo. If anything, you saw a rat. 
There are very few squirrels. There. I think I've seen like two squirrels in all of Japan. And they're like really fancy, like white squirrels with super pointy, long, hairy ears and stuff like that. They're already cooking back here too. You can smell it. It smells great. We need smell vision. I've said it before. I'll say it again. We need smell vision. It's a requirement. And Racing Maniac GTA. Any chances to meet up? I'll be in Akihabara area next week. I likely won't be. Sorry. I am. Half of this month is going to be spent in the Kagoshima area. Uh, again, if I can get that Patreon meetup calendar up and running, it'll let me know when we have like more people in the area all at once. And then I can do a group thing and have a bunch of people over at the studio again, just like we did like, what was it? Three months ago now? Was it longer? I don't know when it was. Also, PG Crawford, thank you so much for that super sticker there. Really appreciate that. Definitely want to get another meetup going. It's one of the reasons why I'm working so hard to try and get the studio set up and be a place that's not just a constant mess so that we can do more events, have more people over, make a whole thing of it. That's what the studio is highly intended for. It's a place of work. It's a place of planned meetups. And I want to get more going ASAP. So. Squirrels and cooking in the same sentence. Oh no. <laughs> Norm, I know you got that Sakurako on you now. I <laughs> actually, I do have some of the Sakurako stuff in my backpack right now. You are, you're not wrong. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so regular viewers, long-term viewers. What are we walking towards? I'm guessing the color 12, we'll know. We are walking towards a certain spot that will be crossing in moments. What is that spot? Drop it in the chat and if you haven't done so already, do me a favor. Give that like button some love. I don't know what the next major milestone is, but if we can push it up to that, that would be beautiful. And Susie H in here keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying, will you and Ayaka be viewing tiny homes and more in 2023? I love a live of the tiny home and Ayaka's thoughts. I don't think I would put the pressure on her to do a live stream. Uh, we might. Like if that's something that she's interested in, but it's also a lot of, you know, at least in the video, like she can, she can select like, oh, I, I'd rather not have that in there or I want to, you know, reword that so that it's not, you know, rude to the designer or something like that. And in a live stream, you don't really have that option, but if there's an opportunity to do a live stream together, I'll talk to her about it. We'll definitely, we have more projects on the go, but Ayaka is now graduated from university. She has like a job and a life and all of that stuff. So there are fewer opportunities now for us to do projects together. So we really have to kind of plan them out in advance. And Rowan Water Studio saying hello and happy New Year's. What's the plan for today? Well, thank you very much. You know, I think I hear a boat. Do I hear a boat? Do I hear a boat? Long-term viewers. Yes, I do. It's a tugboat. Tugging. There we go. Tugging a barge. Look at that. Rose just chilling on top of that thing too. What's up, man? I get really nervous to like drop the phone. And this bridge here for long-term viewers. I used to always walk from Tokyo Station 
down to Asakusa during my early days in Japan. Um, during my first, I don't know, year or so living in Japan, I really didn't have money for things like trains to go back and forth to work. I know it, it sounds really goofy, but I just, I, well, I didn't. And so I would actually walk from Tokyo Station where we were down through here, all the way down to Asakusa, back and forth. I'd say it's about an hour and a half, two hours. And I would do that every night and every day to go back and forth to work. Also, I just love this space. And this bridge right here for me, this was like the, the separation between the work side of Tokyo and the fun side of Tokyo. Because once we cross this bridge over there, it's Akihabara. And now I get to come through and like use my boat license to explore Akihabara on these rivers as well, which again, you can find videos of on the main channel. And Joe Griffith saying, going to Japan on the 14th of January, one week in Osaka, second week in Tokyo, so we can explore more of Kanto. Any recommended places to visit? I love the question. Every time I get one of these, I always say, try to give me more context. I have no idea what you're into. I don't know if you're a music fan, if you love the traditional spots, if you're a foodie. I don't know if you love back streets, if you're into anime, if you're into gaming. I don't know if you love nature and parks. There is literally all of that and more. There could be events going on. There could be, you could go up to a circuit and watch some drifting if you wanted to. There's so many things that you could do. You could go around and hit all the book offs and hard offs, like the one that's in front of us right here and do some shopping and exploration or hit the giant Yodobashi camera and it's 400 floors of amazing awesomeness. There are so many, so many things that you could do. I don't really know what you're into. And knowing what you're into when you guys ask me these questions of, hey, what should I do in such and such are super, super helpful so that I can give you better answers. Does that, does that make sense? And try not to get hit by a car here as we cross. It's technically green over there, so I don't really think this is jaywalking but there's a police station down here to the left and I think they would disagree. So that's just lucky. We didn't run that. And soon from next year, uh, they're gonna be changing up some of the bike laws in Japan as well. We've gotten really, really strict with bicycle stuff here in Japan recently, like really strict. And they've been doing this huge crackdown going through the city and stopping people. Luckily, my route is pretty much predetermined and there's nothing illegal for me to do on the bicycle along that route, is follow the road. So I've been lucky not to be stopped yet. But again, they leave so much ambiguity in the laws that they'll find something to stop before if they want to. When is your next meetup in Toronto? The last one was great. I'm hoping to do one maybe around May or June after I do an event in the States, possibly come down to, uh, come up to Toronto, come up to Canada, or there's a small chance in April, I might hit up uh, the Toronto area after doing what's called the Sakura Days Festival in Vancouver, which we have on the go right now. There are other potential overseas events and hangouts and meetups for this year, but I don't want to, I don't want to blow the lid off them before they're too close to being confirmed. So we will leave that at that. Also, every time I get into Akihabara, I'm reminded to give some love to iVideo, who basically provides the, the Wi-Fi that I use everywhere I go. Not sponsored, just they've been giving me Wi-Fi to use since like the channel had like five subscribers. Don't know why they selected me, but they've allowed me to keep my Wi-Fi router and I check every year and it's still 
one of the cheapest that I can find, if not the cheapest. Haven't found anything cheaper yet, so that's a thing. And now we're in Akihabara. So that's also a thing, in case you didn't notice. And by places, I mean cities around Kansai and Kanto. Well, if you're just looking for for cities, like I, I would, I, I, no sarcasm, like completely serious. Google Maps is it's probably your your best friend on that one. I actually so. It's gone on pause for a little bit, but for the past couple of months, I've been working on a series over on Patreon of how to find hidden or amazing places. How to make your trip to Japan 10 times better, going through the same research steps that I take to find all of the places that I use in videos. Basically, everything that I do in videos is found using the, the four techniques that I'm putting up right now Part one and two of that are already up on Patreon and available to watch. Part three and four are a little more involved. And so those are coming this year. Uh, but I would say around Kansai, if you have the energy, make your way out to Gifu area. Gifu has a lot of really cool stuff in the mountains. You can literally throw a dart and land anywhere and be like, oh, this is a good place. I'm, I'm happy that I came here. If you can make your way out to the Nakasendo Trail. Actually, honestly, most of 2021, 2022, uh, the videos you'll find on the channel, except for the stuff in Kagoshima, is focused around exactly those areas. So, and for anybody looking to, to plan a trip and you want to find stuff that is just a little beyond the, the normal like, oh, I, I found this on the YouTube, or I found this here, yada yada, I, I, I found this on Google, or it popped up on Instagram, etc. If you're looking to find places just a little better suited to you and your interests and build your own secret adventure, again, that entire series is being built right now. Episodes one and two are up and we've been having a lot of fun with it. I think I might do episode three or four completely live just to put it all together. Can we please go to Super Potato? It's not open. Nothing, I don't know if you noticed, but it's, it's morning and things are closed. You see, Japan, Japan's like economy. <laughs> we don't need no stinking economy. Screw the economy. We're gonna take one of the most busy, you know, anime and game and electronics districts on the planet and not open anything until 11 a.m. Mwahaha. And then also, by the way, we're gonna close it all at like 6 or 7 p.m. These, these are real things that actually happen. Like, Super Potato, I believe, is one of the ones in the area that opens sometimes a little earlier and stays open a little bit later, but at best, I think you're looking at 10 to 8 or something like that. Let's take a bit. Oh, look at that. <laughs> 11 a.m. 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. That is bonkers. And today shouldn't be a holiday anymore. Uh, New Year's, official New Year's holidays ended as of yesterday. Most businesses should be back in business as of this point. But yeah, yeah. You come out to an area like this and be like, oh, I need to get some electronic parts and not get hit by that truck. I'm gonna come to this store that's open from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. That's super great I wish the whole world was like coming from Canada where we have like a population of like eight people and still having places open at like 8 9 a.m. until like between 8 and 10 p.m. in like desolate places and then coming to Tokyo with 
this population density and seeing places like this in Akihabara open for such short hours is slightly it's it's a it's not a culture shock i feel culture shock is way too strong of a word it's a surprise it's a bit of a surprise so that's a thing and i often sneak this little shrine into many of my videos as well just because i like it look at this space there's just something about this corner and this little shrine here especially when the trains are passing sometimes you'll get both and it just looks really cool and i cannot believe oh there we go oh we got it right there there we are love it and sao 99 saying hey norm heading to tokyo kyoto and osaka any recommendations for knife making shops and street nighttime photography? Okay, I'm gonna start with uh, the knife making shops. My knife making shop, knife shops. You wanna go to uh, Kapabashi Dori. Kapabashi Dori in Tokyo for that. It has an amazing collection of knife shops. Make sure that you branch off to some of the side streets as well. There's an incredible, a lot of people go there for their knife shopping. Uh, in terms of uh, nighttime photography, the Shinbashi area is spectacular where we just were in Kyoto. You want to go to the area just below Kiyomizu Temple, that entire area. There's a whole pagoda there that's gorgeous at night to get a shot of. And in Osaka, pretty much anywhere, uh, the Namba do Otombori, all that stuff, spectacular spots at night. Definitely check them out. I hope that those very specific recommendations were of some use to you. And Edu's, I'm going to Japan in March, April. How's the weather there during that time? And is there any areas that I should avoid? I know Japan is safe, but I don't know. Honestly, um, weather's fine. I, it depends on where you're coming from. Like for a Canadian, that's like summer weather. But if you're coming from like a tropical space, it might feel a bit cold. It's normal spring temperatures. It can be a little cool. Uh, it will likely be very windy, so be prepared for wind because um, the spring in Japan can get really windy. I don't really say there's any areas that you need to avoid. Just exercise common sense. Japan can lull you into a false sense of security, thinking that it's insanely safe when really it's just a country with normal people like any other country and one minute you're like oh look how beautiful this is and next minute your wallet's missing and to anyone who's like that would never happen in japan it happens in japan it happens in japan all the time mind you the two most stolen items in all of japan are very peaceful items it's like umbrellas and then bicycles i guess bicycles isn't that peaceful but with that being said, that was our walk. We did it. We walked from Tokyo Tower to Akihabara in like an hour and 40 minutes. So that's, that's not bad at all. It, it's okay. Yeah, watch out for areas like Kabukicho and Roppongi. If anybody grabs you and say, hey, come to my shop, don't go. There are two things I would avoid. Number one, anyone who's like, come to my shop, don't do it, just don't. And number two, places that say, we have an English menu. I just don't, don't. Like there are places that have English menus that don't go to their way to advertise it. Just go to those. If there's a giant sign outside that says, we have English menu available, just avoid it personally. You're likely not to run into any trouble, but you're statistically more likely to run into a bit of trouble in a place that is trying to grab people who don't speak Japanese. Long time sub, newbie to chat, welcome Wayne. Super happy to have you here. I think I saw a comment from you the other day. Maybe I didn't, maybe I did. I think I did. I recognize your name, your profile picture, or maybe there's someone who had one similar, or maybe there wasn't. And this is the way the cookie crumbles. Also, I feel like this would be a really great rooftop to be able to get on top of 
if the stairs weren't locked off. But for now, this has been the first live stream of 2023. It feels weird to say 2023. We're there. We're in 2023. So I am going to make my way to the studio for the day, get things started, kick the day off. Thank all of you so much for hanging out. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Make sure those notifications are on. A lot of impromptu streams that will not be left up on the channel will be happening this year. Do me a favor when things wrap up as well. Leave me something in the comments. Let me know what your plans are for 2023. Are you planning on doing prep for a future trip to Japan? Are you moving to Japan? Do you just like hearing the word Japan? Let me know in the comment section once the video goes live. Thank you guys so, so much for hanging out today. And you know, I will talk to you again real soon. Fake ending. <laughs> Those who know, know. Like, you know it's going to be a fake ending, so you wait around because you're like, this is not the real ending. It's not, it's not going to end. But then at the same time, like, dozens of people will drop off and disappear. And they, they didn't know. They thought it was the real ending. They thought, oh, well, it's just a bunch of girls on a sign. It must be over now. It's all finished. But it wasn't. This guy also has like all these like radios in his car. He's literally got his radio license posted on his car. I also, by the way, have a radio license. It's probably because, you know, shop sells radios. So that'd be why. There actually weren't that many people who left. I thought there was gonna be more. I feel like you guys are getting used to me doing this. Where should we go for the next stream? Where would you guys like to see for the next live stream. Actually, do me a favor on that. I have a short list of 42 locations that I would like to stream this year. That's probably more than we can do in the year. But if you have any specific locations that you would like to see me stream, please do me a kind favor and drop those in the comments section when the video goes live so I can check back to those. I just like looking at these trains too. All right, guys, thank you. And we'll see you again soon. Seriously though, where should we go? Also, it makes me wonder, like if I were to climb up that ladder, what would I see? Rizal throwing in a super sticker there. Thank you so much for that. Also, Tanaka Kanak, I almost missed this super chat in here. It says, 21 days booked early summer staying in Asakusa. Your older videos on that neighborhood have always inspired me to stay there. I really hope that you enjoy it. It is a spectacular, spectacular area to be. I also just love how the sun looks out here right now. So thank you so much for that. Again, in the comment section, when the video goes live, let me know what areas you'd like to see and I'll add it to the list of like 40 plus <laughs> locations that I'm gonna try and go this year on the channel. Can you imagine if I actually ended it with okay, bye? <laughs> what a way to end it. Okay, all right. We're gonna take a quick peek at the river because I wanna look at the river. I'm going in March any good public baths yeah just google public bath wherever you are and a lot of them were shut down unfortunately during the pandemic so a lot of them are gone like a lot like japan took a huge hit on its public bath culture uh, throughout the two years of the pandemic so many of them shut down so many of them disappeared it's really really unfortunate but yeah if you guys have any ideas at all of what you would like to see in this year's streams, drop it in the comments. What we're gonna do is there's a really awesome view up here from the river that I wanna show you. So we're gonna come up this way. And uh, it's actually just right over here, so.
<laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Can you imagine though? All right. That's the view. Thank you guys so much. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. And I will see you guys again real soon.